Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone, my name is Mohazali Benito. I'm from the State Islamic University of Jakarta. Today I'd like to talk about classification of plasmodium parasite in human red blood cells using randomly wired neural networks. First of all, we start with the introduction. Traditionally, mal malaria disease has detected by testing and analyzing of the red blood cells with a microscope. However, the method requires special skills of the researcher and taking lots of time. Another way to di diagnose malaria is by a rapid diagnostic test, but then it is advisable to keep testing under the microscope because it provides less information than microscopy tests. Despite the decreasing of annual parasite incident, in the most Indonesian regions in Papua province, the disease is still quite large. In the last decade, machine learning techniques have been grown rapidly. In particular, deep learning. Therefore, we will be able to build an automation process which can identify the disease quickly. In general, the automation process for malaria diagnosis divided into several parts, includes cell, cell staging, cell segmentation, and cell classification. Now, uh, this is a um, uh, uh, random graph that we use in this presentation or in this uh, research or paper. Uh, what's, what Strogatz model is defined by creating a small word graph with the parameters that can be set or a number of nodes, the odds node on the next boring graph and maximum nodes on the next boring graph. And this is a uh, randomly wired neural networks, uh, randomly wired neural network, or we say RWNN, is a deep learning model that uses random graph at its architecture. For each each edge of the graphs perform a data transfer from the node to another node. RWNN has shown its advantage on ImageNet problem, which based on a pre-trained model. And there are three tasks on each node. And there are three tasks on each node of the graphs in a randomly wired neural network. First of all, we call it aggregation, which is an incoming data from one or more edge, for more or uh, incoming data from one or more edges, which connected to a node, and we can calculate them by using a weighted sum. The weight can be optimized and always positive. And the next one is transformation. After the data de aggregated, the node performs a transformation by using ReLU, activation, convolution, batch norm, triplet. This is. And finally, the data after the transformation is duplicated and sent to each edge as output. And this is a random graph we use in our paper. To make this graph, first we make a lattice, and then we choose random node for neighboring to another random node. And we do this until we have a maximum neighboring for every node in the graph. And in this architecture, we use seven layers. 
the first layer is convolution layer with three by three convolution matrix and two output channels. And the next layer is a um, random graph. We use for random graph and we use a average pool with 3840 channels in the polling. And finally, in fully connected layer, we use two channels. Yes, we use two channels. The data used in this paper is the secondary data were taken in the National Libra Library of Medicine documentation. The data is derived from Android application developed by researchers at Lister Hill National Center for Biomedical Communications, which are part of the National Library of Medicine. This application is useful to reduce the burden for people who are diagnostic in limited areas of research and improve diagnostic accuracy. The application takes a thin blood cell that is the color of the ginsa from 1500 infected patients of falciparum parasite and 50 healthy patients at Medical College Sitagong Hospital, Bangladesh. The image of the acquired cell is manu manually identified by an expert blood cell reader in the Tropical Drug Research uni Unit Mahidol Oxford in Bangkok. The image that cannot be identified or are as archived in the National Laboratory National Library of Medicine. This last step is to implement a level level set based algorithm to detect and segment it and segment uh, the red blood cells. 27,558 image, images of thin blood cell that is in the color of the ginsa and the number of image should be balance, balanced between parasitized and uninfected. And before we input the data into the model, we make a pre-processing this data with field image. We make a non-square size of image become a square image with additional padding in the area needed. Then, then we normalize the image and then we write, resize the image into size 64 by 64. In the training phase, we divide it we divided the data by five and we also use the cross validation method to ensure that we get uh, get a good results hyperparameter setting hyperparameter settings are referred to um, this is a hyperparameter settings that we use uh, learning rate uh, 0.0001 and batch size 8 and epoch 100 and then we use a computer with intel core i9 with 32 gigs of ram and we use gpu geforce rtx 2080 with uh, 8 gigs and it takes 17.7 .7 hours to train RWNN. As we can see, the accuracy in every epoch and each fault is increased. You see? So we can conclude that the RWNN trained correctly. To make sure we can see the graphic loss. The graphic of loss on the training and we can see that our RWNN train goes to zero and how about other models 
can it classify better than RWNN? As we know before, other researchers have researched with a pre-trained model with result ResNet 50 dominate other pre-trained model. So we run ResNet 50 with the same treatment as RWNN. This is uh, the comparison of RWNN and ResNet 15, which is a pre-trained model. So this table shows the average performance of RWNN and pre-trained model on the data test of each fault. The research show that the RWNN model can demonstrate performance excellent compared to ResNet 50, which is a transfer learning model or pre-trained model. The average accuracy of classification using the RWNN model reached 1950.08%, while the ResNet 50 is smaller than RWNN for its precision recall and F1 score as well. It indicates that the RWNN is better for classification of human red blood cells with which infected with um, falciparum parasites compared to the transfer learning model. Okay, this is our conclusion for this paper. From the data and model we use, show that there is a tendency randomly wired neural network architecture is meant to classify image of human red blood cell infected with falciparum parasites with small faults or small error, I think. Compared to transfer learning model and other similar studies, RWNN model show, shows better performance and in all aspects of performance measurement. And we also and we also expect that deep learning will significantly improve the working efficiency and accuracy of malaria diagnosis and other medical application. Thank you.